most high father. All praises do. Hold us through it all, Lord. Teach me, Lord. Alright, alright, alright. Welcome back, guys. How's everybody doing out there? This is going to be from the book of Enoch, actually. I did all of the seven seals months ago, and they, that was all the way like chapter one to chapter five. Now, here we are, and it is kind of matches up. They're talking about the exact same thing that the last video I posted was where it was talking about what Lucifer and third body of Satan. I don't know if you watched a video before this one. But in the seven seals, y'all want to go watch that of my Enoch, those seven seals. I got them in a playlist. And it talks about the same thing that the last video I posted ended on. So I don't know if it got to the end, but it talked about this enslaved light. It's like a trap. But I'm going to read this now, the prophecy of the great harvest, because after Enoch had read all those seven seals, and the folly of mankind, he was, uh, he, was, he was crying. He was shedding tears of shame for mankind. It says, for uh, I, Enoch, could bear to watch no more of the future folly of mankind. I closed the book of life, and shedding tears of shame for mankind, I asked the angel who had told me to open the book. O holy angel, can man repent, can mankind repent, that he will inherit the blessed future, or is he doomed to continue his present path, which leads to the dark future? The angel replied, the book of the future has blank pages waiting to be written upon. Dancing upon those pages are possibilities and probabilities ever changing, ever shifting. Behold, the present path of mankind is like a river flowing into the future. The seer reads the ripples in the present river and sees the future that will be provided. The river changes not its course. For lo, a river can change course, but no man can say when or where. But alas, rivers Rivers change not their course often or easily, wherefore the present course of mankind can be altered, but not without great effort, and the outcome is not certain. The best seers are the Lord and Lady, and they grant visions of, that, of what they read in the ripples to their chosen prophets. prophets. And lo, you have been chosen, yea, you have read the ripples, not only with your eyes, but their eyes, and the visions you have seen of a possible blessed future and a possible wretched future are given for a purpose, that you will warn the world of what future it will inherit if it changes not course, and that you will hold forth the great possibility. And the great possibility is the possible blessed future that you have seen in vision. Then behold, the Lady Janah spoke to me saying, O Enoch, when you could bear to watch no more of the future folly of man and close the book of life, and shed tears of shame for mankind, you shed also tears of compassion and every tear of compassion shed for mankind adds to the river of the present and influences that river. As your tears of compassion fall into that river, behold, new ripples appear. And think not that I speak merely of human tears, which are physical tears shed by physical eyes. Lo, the tears of compassion are spiritual tears shed by spiritual eyes and are the water and are the water of life. Behold, the water of life may take many forms a touch on the cheek of one who needs comfort, a piece of bread given to a hungry child, a spiritual teaching given to a sincere seeker. All these pure drops of living water. All these are pure drops of living water. The motion in the ocean, emotion, the water of life, the tears of compassion. Wherefore, think not that you are called to sit and mourn, crying human tears of despair or sadness. Lo, be living water. So Bruce Lee told us that, right? Be the water. <laughs> right? Okay. And bring joy to those that mourn. Even so, from time to time, you may witness such folly that you will be moved to shed tears of sadness. If so, be not ashamed. For even the Lord and the Lady have shed such tears. And having shed such tears, behold, we continue our work. And in that work, our joy is restored. And in your work, O holy Enoch, your joy will be restored. Behold, when you could bear to watch no more of the future folly of man, you closed the book of life, wherefore you saw not what came next. 
I tell you truly, Enoch, whatever the future of mankind, even if it be the dark one from which you turned your eyes, behold, the Lord and the Lady will not abandon this world. Yea, we will return to the world at the time of the great harvest, and if mankind has changed course at our coming, we will be recognized and received by the many. And if mankind has not changed course, we will return in the dark future. You saw in a vision and will be recognized and received by the faithful few. And the faithful few are those called the naturals. For at the darkest hour, when their rebellion against the hidden power seems defeated, behold, the Lord and the Lady will return. Wherefore, one thing is certain, in the last days, we will return. Lo, even before the great harvest of the last days, the Lord and the Lady will come to earth. Yea, once in flesh, we will come before the great harvest, and many times in the appearance of flesh, appearing in visions to the faithful. And always we will be represented by on earth by our two arms, the Zeroa Nigla and the Zeroa Nistar. Even so, in times of persecution, the revealed arm will be small, for our enemies attack that which they can see. But think not that our hidden arm is even small. Just think not that our hidden arm is ever small, for that is the error our enemies make. And that is why, in the end, we will be victorious. All right. Now, this is chapter six. I'm going to have to do this um, in a like a little series because it's over 200 verses. But this is the seven heavens. And I was doing a study with my, uh, with my friend, and she was reading from the Quran. And some of this matches up. And then we also started reading from the Vedic. About they have 14 levels. I think the Quran had the seven. And then if you follow my channel, you have just read about the seven um, levels in the Abraham and Sarah on uh, the creation of our world videos. So this would be another seven heavens out of this Holy Megillah Nazarene Bible of the Essene Way. I'm going to do this next. I'm going to give you a little preview because we've got a few more minutes left. So there were seven orbs that she had. Now Enoch is out of his body. You've got to go watch all of the Enoch videos. If it got Enoch on it, you watch him in the order. And then you'll watch this harvest video. And then you'll know what these details are. But oh, uh, she said, uh, well, this is the, the dove talking to Enoch. Now, O oh, Enoch, Enoch, behold the seven crystal orbs above my right hand. Lo, these seven orbs symbolize the seven heavens of your world. This night you shall know their mysteries, yea, you will know the mysteries of the seven heavens. Gaze, O Enoch, into the first orb. Behold, as I gazed into the first orb, it was as though I were transported into the orb. Yea, I was hovering in the sky of a heavenly world in a body of light, and the lady was with me. I asked, where are we, my lady? Jana replied, this world will be called El Kush. And it will be the new first heaven of the realm of your son. Yea, the holy mountain in the center of Cush will be raised to become the center of El Cush. For behold, your world was to be the first heaven of your son, but has fallen out of the heavens to become a contested world. Yea, except for the Nasarian homeland, which is the holy mountain in the center of Cush, your world has fallen. Wherefore, the holy mountain shall be raised from this world and will be the center of the new first heaven. Okay. And so she's showing him these seven heavens. And I'm going to skip just to give you guys a little preview of what's in here. Oh, so after he receives, see, we're in verse 206 now, same chapter 6 of Enoch. After he received this Mahezek Dola, which is the great revelation, started talking about the different types of look at this it says the first the primary purpose of those of the second heaven so see it started talking about the different heavens it's so good i'm going to do this on a video the first heaven is the attainment of sekel neiman which is faithful consciousness the second heaven is the attainment of sekel tahor which is pure consciousness the third is the attainment, the third heaven is the attainment of Sekel Ha Ratazon, the consciousness of will. And the fourth 
heaven is the attainment of progressively higher degrees of Shekel Mazahir, which is radiant consciousness. This fourth heaven, their work is to share love by being love. Yea, so much love fills their hearts that it shines outward like rays from the sun. All of those of the fourth heaven are like, are those of, sorry, all of those of the fourth heaven, like those of the lower heavens, have obtained some degree of Shekel Mazir. Those who ascend from the fourth heaven unto the fifth are those who attain the highest degree of Shekel Ma Zahir, which is Shekel Nitshi. Shekel Nitshitsi, I don't think I'm saying these right, guys. I'm just trying to rush. It means enduring consciousness at, and is the attainment of the body that cannot die. Yo, this is so deep. So stay tuned for this because... When you see, I'm a, this is going to be the completion of the Book of Enoch in the Holy Megillah Nazarene Bible of the Essene Way. And I finally get to this part. We're here now. So enjoy this uh, prophecy of the harvest. And um, if you haven't seen all of the Enoch videos on my channel, all the seven seals, watch that. So you'll be ready for this, the revelation of the seven heavens. It's so fresh. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. I'll be back.